I grew up in Switzerland, a place that is, of course, well known for its watches. And the watches are everywhere you grew up, surrounded by watches. It's part of the culture and society of Switzerland. And I remember as a child, my dad taking me to a watch store. And I remember that the person behind the counter that was showing me all these watches said something that got my attention at the time. And he pointed to two watches. And I remember vividly that one of them was priced at about 500 Swiss francs and the other one was 8,000 Swiss francs. And he pointed to those and he said, you won't believe it when I say this, but these two watches probably cost the same to make. The very same movement that goes inside the cheaper watch goes inside the expensive one. Yet, he explained to me, the expensive one is the one that sells in higher quantities. It's the most popular model and it's the brand that everybody wants. Why would you pay for the more expensive one when the other one is fundamentally the same thing? This, I remember, is one of the first instances when I started to ask questions about marketing and consumer psychology and customer behavior. I wanted to answer the question, why are we moving towards the more expensive watch? What's the mechanism behind it? I didn't have the tools at the time to understand, to explain what was going on, but those were the kind of tools that I would accumulate through my marketing journey by studying marketing and understanding fundamentally what was going on behind the scenes, what was creating this. And today in this first lecture, I'm going to share some of those answers with you. One of the common misconceptions about marketing is that marketing is about aggressive sales and advertising and price promotions, you know, things like selling products to customers that customers fundamentally don't need. And that's the dark side of marketing. Marketing, of course, is a lot more than that. But interestingly, this misconception about marketing is, is a very popular one. And sometimes it's one that also managers who are not from a marketing background might have. I remember many years ago bumping into a very successful entrepreneur who had set up a business in the footwear industry, so selling shoes, boots, those kind of things. And I remember him saying to me, well, you know, we don't do any marketing. We have no need for marketing because we don't advertise aggressively. We don't do any special discounts and promotions or anything like that. We're not on TV. We're not on the radio. Yet people buy our products because I have a team within my business that finds out exactly what customers want and we give it to them. And I remember thinking, what you have just described is what marketing is fundamentally all about. It's about finding out what kind of problems customers have and then creating a product that meets those needs. So he had a narrow view of what marketing is. He thought marketing was about advertising, promotion, things like that. But marketing is a lot more than that. It's about connecting with customers by finding out what they need and giving it to them. Marketing has been around for ages. When you think about the origin of marketing, it goes back to thousands of years ago when people started trading and selling and exchanging goods, etc. Think about the concept of branding, for example. The word brand comes from an old Norse word that stands for to burn. And it started off with the act of burning, for example, your name or your initials or your logo, whatever, into goods, say pottery and vases and things like that, or for example, your uh, cattle or something like that. That's where branding fundamentally came from, to identify the origin of a product. Over time, of course, it's developed into more than that. Now branding is about creating a symbolic association, it's about creating emotion around the product. In the old days, marketing was just about you know, selling products. As long as you can make a product, you can sell it. Now when we talk about marketing, we talk about creating a service in a sense. So think about, for example, a car. A car is, yes, a set of wheels and an engine and a chassis and all those things, but a car fundamentally provides a service of transportation. So car makers are fundamentally providing a service by letting you go from point A to point B. A pen is not about uh, selling a pen, it's about selling writing services. A uh, sandwich is about uh, getting rid of your hunger. Every product does something for a customer. It solves a need, it helps you achieve an objective. And so a product in marketing is not a set of features, it's not just a thing, but it's a vehicle for achieving something. It's the provision of an outcome to consumers.
The purpose of any business is to create shareholder value, returns to investors, to create financial performance. But how do we do that? How do we create financial value? Well, we do it by creating customer value. And that's where marketing comes in. The purpose of marketing fundamentally is about finding out what kind of problems customers have and then help develop solutions in the form of products or services that meet the needs of these customers. But it's not enough to create a product that has great value, of course. We also need to communicate that value so that customers realize that we have something that they want. And then it's about continuing to build relationships with customers so that in the future, they're more likely to choose us to create loyalty. And this is something that creates value for both customers because we make their lives easier by meeting their needs, but also creates value for the organization because it creates financial returns. Imagine there's a customer who wants to buy a pair of running shoes. So it's very likely that that customer might have heard of some brands. For example, they heard about the Nike brand and they know what, what Nike stands for, what it does and the kind of associations that marketing uh, has created for Nike. So having heard about Nike, they might go online and do some research. They might go to the Nike website and find out more about the shoes that they sell and other things about Nike that is of interest to them. They might go on social media and compare reviews from previous customers. So all of these things are things that marketers have an influence on to make sure that the information that reaches customers creates value for Nike even before the customer has made any purchase. So marketing begins even before the purchase by establishing the reputation of a company, by establishing the brand, the association, what it stands for. And then when the customer comes into the store, you also have marketing helping delivering, for example, superior customer service by having people that are knowledgeable about the brand, that deliver excellent customer service. And again, that will influence the perception of Nike. Now imagine the customer makes a purchase, takes the shoes home and then goes for a run. They're experiencing the brand. Did it meet expectations? So marketing, again, helps by setting the right expectations. If those expectations are met, we're likely to build a relationship with those customers and they're likely to come to the store and buy more Nike products in the future. So can you see how marketing is fundamentally about helping customers through a journey? That journey often begins before the purchase by establishing a reputation for the brand and then during the purchase by delivering that value, facilitating the process. And then even afterwards by building a relationship with customers that creates value for both the company and the customer. One of the things brands often forget is that it's important to maintain customer loyalty over time. A lot of brands are obsessed with acquiring new customers all the time. They want to grow, they want more customers, but in doing that, they often forget that they should protect the customers that they already have. Ask yourself the following question, for example. You know when you go on a website or perhaps you go to a new hotel or a new restaurant, one of the questions that were often asked is things like, how did you hear about us? How did you find us? Now, the reason why they're asking you that question is because they want to find out how to attract more customers like you. So they want to know how to generate new customers because obviously whatever they have done has worked to attract you. So how do we get more like you, right? So this is symptomatic in a way of an obsession with new customer acquisition. Now, ask yourself the following question now. How many times or how often does that company reach out to you, they get in touch with you when they haven't seen you for a while? So for example, you haven't revisited that restaurant for six months or you haven't checked into a hotel for a year. How many times do they call you up and ask, hey, why haven't you come back? Not very often, do they? And again, this is symptomatic of a company that is obsessive about new customer acquisition. We want to attract new customers. We want to grow in terms of number of customers, but not just as obsessed about customer retention. Yet customer retention, customer loyalty, is possibly, arguably, in many industries, more important than new customer acquisition. Why? Well, fundamentally because retaining an existing customer is a lot cheaper than acquiring a new one. So when you have gone through customer acquisition, you spent a lot of money, resources, attracting this, attracting this customer, the customer is finally in, why wouldn't you protect that relationship? It's a lot cheaper and it's a lot more effective and efficient in the long term. So sometimes 
it's not just about growing the number of customers. It's not just about acquiring new customers, but it's about keeping the ones that we already have in, keeping them happy, keeping them satisfied, protecting their customer loyalty.